Every week, Jim Coventry and I break down some of the interesting rankings that might be out of line with the mainstream. Jim, this week, there is no mainstream. It is bizarro chaos world after all the wide receiver carnage, but we're going to do our best to tackle it anyhow. Uh, let's start off with quarterback Jared Goff, Mr. Efficient, Mr. I uh, MVP, odds are climbing guy. Why are you such a hater? Is it because you're a Chicagoan? Is that why you don't like him this week? <laughs> you know, it's it's lack of volume. The touchdown's been great the last four weeks. I mean, two, three, two, and two, and that's been phenomenal. But his pass attempts, he has to be ridiculously efficient. He has had fewer, 25 or fewer attempts in four straight games. Mm -hmm. And now Jamison Williams won't play. And I know he hasn't been a big part of the offense. He's only seen a few targets. But that speed element, changes how teams view them and the other thing is look this week they probably blow out the titans and this team ultimately they want to run the football when they have a lead they want to run the football now if they want to rub somebody's nose in it like with dallas where they they threw the ball to offensive linemen late in the game minnesota they wanted to prove something to a divisional opponent this is a non-conference game I think they run the ball 40, 45 times here. I think Goff throws 18 passes. I don't think they try to pile it on through the passing game. That's all it is. Your your, your call of Goff as a quarterback five, it makes perfect sense. I just think the game is going to make it more like quarterback 13. Yeah. So here's where I think. I think they're going to get ahead of Tennessee early bypassing, though. Uh, Legereus Sneed missed last week against Buffalo. Mm -hmm. We got the quad injury. I don't know if he plays this week. We're waiting for uh, injury reports, obviously. Chidobe Awuzie, he, he's he's where he belongs on IR. Uh, <laughs> so that means we saw way more Daryl Baker and Jarvis Brownlee than we really need mm -hmm. to see in pass coverage there. And I, I do think this is exploitable. And I, I just think Goff at home is going to be hyper-efficient. So I think the efficiency continues. And that's why my embracement of him continues there. But I think you do make good points about if they do get out to lead. They're 11-point favorite, by the way, too. Yes. So they are predicted if they get out to lead, they are going to want to run the ball. This is what they like to do. I just think they get there early by passing, and we get, we get our production that way. Let's talk Najee Harris coming off his best game of the year uh, against the Jets, a team that I didn't think was a, that especially vulnerable to the run. They get the Giants at home this week. What is it with them facing New York teams at home in primetime? I mean, it's right. Who wants this? Uh, <laughs> but I, I guess there's a thirsty audience for it there. Uh, you're all the way down at 29 on Najee Harris this week. Tell me why. Yeah, and actually, Najee had a better game two weeks ago against the Raiders. He got yeah. his 106 yards on 14 carries and a touchdown yeah. where he needed 21 carries against, get against the Jets. Here's the point. The Jets are giving up truck loads of rushing production. They're mm -hmm. almost as bad as the Saints against the run. And the Raiders, they might not be there, but they're really close. So Najee took advantage of two wonderful matchups. The Giants are good enough against the run. Just look back a few weeks before. Najee against Dallas. 14 for 42. Indianapolis, 13 for 19. And these I are just plus think, matchups, yeah. Yes, I just think he caught a perfect storm of two defenses that can't tackle, can't plug holes. They've got nothing going from The Giants have Dexter Lawrence in the middle. And that offensive line for the Steelers, they're still dealing with injuries and chemistry. And I think Lawrence and the linebackers are enough to just make this a slog. I think this is more of the 14 for 42 game. Maybe he gets a touchdown, but I do have um, Najee Harris a bit lower than you, closer to running back 29. So he's more like a flex for me. Sure. And that, you know, the thing is running back is as healthy as it's been in a while in terms of when I did the ranks this week, it's like, oh yeah, there's a lot of running backs. I like when I do my flex rankings, I, you know, running backs are higher than they usually are vis-a-vis -vis wide receivers. So, uh, you know, I, I, 29 might not be the insult that people might perceive it as. And, and I think that's one thing like, but I'll take, give me Najee over like Deandre Swift is one point of example there. And, uh, you know, Swift has had two good games in a row before the bye. Now he faces the commanders this week. Uh, on the road. We'll see what happens in that game, but just, just as a point of reference there. If you like this video, please smash that like button. Hit subscribe so you know when more videos like this are coming. And of course, check us out on Rotowire, rotowire.com slash try. Among the things that you can see there are my rankings, the Rotowire value meter rankings, which go up every late night, Tuesday night, West Coast time. Wide receiver. We're going to spend a couple of spots here because it's a big fat mess. Uh, a lot of there, there. I think there were four hundred yard pass catchers last week. There's a lot of receivers getting hurt. Uh, you know, I get to like seven or eight or nine, and I'm done with players I'm comfortable with. Typically, I, I feel like top twenty, twenty five. Oh yeah, definite start. Feel really good about ranking him here. So I'll preface it by saying I've got Terry McLaurin at eight. 
but it's not like eight with a bullet. It's like, okay, there, I, I, I marginally like him better than others I have behind him. You've got him at 16. I'm probably not going to have too much disagreement with you, but tell me why you don't. And, and I think this is a pretty, I think you're going to talk about the matchup against the Bears. So go ahead. Yeah. And, you know, I really hate to throw any shade at McLaurin because it's been four straight games. He has been like an insane fantasy producer and he is a great player. He's been for many years and he has a quarterback. He might not have a quarterback on Sunday. We're not sure about Jaden Daniels, but even if he plays, I still go back to McLaurin's schedule. Tampa Bay, terrible secondary. The Giants, the same. The Bengals, the Cardinals. Even Cleveland, who plays all man. In that game, they played almost all man. And therefore, he got behind the defense because yep. there was no safety. And then we thought, all right, Baltimore. But Baltimore is like the 30th pass defense. They're brutal. This is the first good pass defense he's played. And the Bears actually have a little bit of a pass rush. They're slightly above average. Yep. I just think this is not the matchup where he is getting behind the defense and he's just caving them in. And if if he plays against Jalen Johnson, probably half of the snaps. I don't think they travel him, but if it's half the snaps, I think Jalen Johnson really has been a lockdown corner. What I was just going to say, we probably over apply the term lockdown corner, but Jalen Johnson belongs in that class. So you make good points. I, I think I might even be with you. I might nudge Mr. McLaurin down a little bit there, especially considering the uncertainty at quarterback. I do think uh, Daniels plays, but I'm that's I'm not even to play a doctor on the internet. I don't know no, for sure. No, uh, <laughs> I, I, I just it's just a hunch. Uh, the last one, Tyreek Hill. Um, my magic eight ball doesn't is very cloudy when it comes to all the Miami players. Uh, I've got him at 19. You're all the way to two though, Jim Coventry. Yes, yes. You're like. Welcome back to a, here's a warm embrace. It, is it really that simple to us going to unlock Tyreek again? Jeff, they're going to hang 40 points. If you're betting same game parlays, just bet the Dolphins over 30 points. Take the minus three and a half, two over 225, Tyreek over 100 yards, even throwing a Jalen Waddle over 70. Arizona can't cover, they can't rush, and they lost Dennis Gardeck. Dennis Gardeck was actually their best pass rusher, and he's terrible, and they lost him. This defense has zero chance of putting up any resistance. Two, it's going to be the timing base, quick passes to get his receivers in space. They're going to do all the heavy lifting after the pass. This is just very basic for them. And we've seen them at home, the Dolphins at home. Two, look, it was a concussion. It wasn't a shoulder injury. It wasn't a knee injury. If he's cleared from that, his body is fine. It's just if he's healthy enough to play, there is, and you got to think. This offense has got to be ramped up through the moon to get back in the playoff race and to just to show we are back. You know, it's a leap of faith, though. I, I really <laughs> think it is a leap of faith to think that the timing is going to be there and that's all it took. The game where Tua got hurt, it was in the second half. Tyreek was not having a good game against Buffalo. No, granted, Buffalo is a better defense than, he's, than, than Arizona. And they know him. They know yeah. him well. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I, I, I'm... I have a hard time believing everything's going to be magically fixed. They're, the Dolphins, just watch that game against the Colts. They did stupid things all game long. And I know that's a harsh term, but like and you're, you get your like third drive of the game and Alec Ingold is getting big carries. He had the fumble in the deep in Colts territory. So, okay, that was a mistake. We'll move on. No, third and one in the fourth quarter. <laughs> Alec Ingold again. He gets stuffed. Then they miss a 54-yard field goal. It just deployment of personnel is just boggling to me how did they had a bye week jim and they got two touches to tyreek hill two two targets to jalen waddle i don't care if you jim coventry are the quarterback <laughs> that that can't happen this is no. supposed to be an offensive genius this is supposed to be the most unstoppable offense in the nfl you've got these weapons and you don't even try to use them it, it i they gave away a very winnable game to the colts who are the luckiest team in the nfl there's no doubt, and it's hard to argue at all that. I just, Mike McDaniel has to see with Tua back, you've, you've got to run your offense. They're two and four. Their their season is, if they if they play badly and somehow they get upset, their season's over. It's yeah, done. It is. They're at I'm, home. Yeah. Like I said, if Arizona could cover anybody, I just can't imagine how much separation those receivers are to get within one second. It's going to be an insane amount of separation. You can't bracket them. They have nobody to bracket with. It's just <laughs> they have nothing. This is like a college defense against you know this, this offense. I just don't see in any world where they could even remotely slow them down. That's just my call. All right. Well, I, you know, in the league, I have Tyree Kill. I, I hope you're right, my friend. <laughs> uh, I just it's been a, it's been an unmitigated disaster so far. And, yes. Uh, 
Got to got to leave it at that. But all right, there you go. Again, please check out Rotowire, rotowire.com slash try for more in, uh, content like this. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button especially, and leave, it, leave us comments and questions. We promise to get back to you. Thanks again for tuning in. I'm Jeff Erickson. He's Jim Comfrey. Thanks for checking out Rotowire.